Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So today we're kind of rolling back the clock a little and going with and everything I learned, or everything I've learned so far about the Bard class, and specifically solo focus. So we're going to talk spells, weapons, music, the whole nine yards. So to get started, I have had some success with this class, solo, and goblin caves, and I'm just starting to kind of see its potential in Howling Crypts. This is my early impressions in a way of what I think works well, what I've experienced so far, to kind of give you guys a little bit of a jump start on how to make yourself successful as a solo bard player. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's easy. Really, the biggest hurdle is getting past that first starter weapon, as that rapier does absolutely nothing. So that's why early on I take rapier mastery, because starting rapier is garbage. You have to do so much attacking for so little damage. Eventually, once I'm past that starting rapier, I jump into charismatic performance, which makes spell, well, music playing way easier. Basically meaning you get a perfect song hitting way less notes. So you kind of tech it a bit and end songs early. And then superior dexterity is really good, allowing you to switch weapons and musical instruments way faster. Dancing feet's also kind of nice if you're trying to get a little bit of space from someone while, you know, jamming out that allegro or accelerando, whatever it's called, to get your movement speed going. Can be nice. I have tried Wanderer's Luck, and I'll talk about that more maybe in another video, because I'm still kind of testing that out. But for skills, dissonance, the silence, isn't really that good. You have to have an instrument out to use it, and really, you should be playing music, not just spamming a silence when you run into the random wizard that you may never run into. So I never use dissonance, I actually use the 10 spell memory, avoiding encore as well, because once you get charismatic performance, a lot of your spells are easier to play anyway. So here's my spell setup. So, the theory behind this is, spells I like to use the most are on the right, while the ones that are really, really influential, I think, are on the right, and then things on the left are a little bit more utility, with a few Lear songs I do like to keep on the 122nd rotation. What I mean by that is, a lot of these spells, like the movement speed one, have a duration that lasts upwards of 90 to 120 seconds. So if you keep those ones going, like Harmonic Shield, Battle of Courage, those ones are all your 120 second ones, basically meaning you can keep them active constantly while you're exploring the dungeon. Sure, it's a lot of mixing and matching, which is why I put Lear stuff and Flute stuff on the left, Drum stuff and Lute stuff on the right. You'll see I have Song of Shadow stuck in there, which can be used for utility to turn invisible, and then the Unchained spell that opens chests and doors. Probably better in a team, although even solo it does make looting a little bit faster. As you may be able to tell, the right side focus is basically on action speed and movement speed. Allegro, with action speed on top of area of alacrity, I think it is, at the top. 120 second cooldown on the top one, and then you go Allegro for a burst if you want some crazy action speed. Similar to the right, you have uh, beats of alacrity, which give you 120 second movement speed. And then you get Accelerando, which gives you like a boost of movement speed. So really, you're picking and choosing those moments. Really high amount of movement speed or a quick burst of action speed, i.e. swing speed. And then Rousing Rhythm is kind of a weird one. It is basically an all attributes weapon or buff that you can play like continuously for every 60 seconds, I think it is. Can be very good. In of Darkness, don't recommend until late game if you actually want to buff up your magic damage. And the rest of these ones to me are a little bit too finicky or too team oriented to really be influential for me. Piercing Shrill is kind of odd. Uh, odd to hit, and Banjo's Hell just doesn't quite do enough in a 1v1. Shriek of Weakness is 10 times better on the flute wheel, and it's the only flute spell I actually take, reducing players' armor rating, and not exclusively players, also PvE. It makes PvE so much easier. And I will show some examples of all these things I'm discussing here shortly. But one last note on Harmonic Shield. If you check the stats on the Dark and Darker wiki, it's basically a 15% reduction in damage for 120 seconds, basically a fighter's taunt ability with a way longer duration. Now let's get into some examples. First tip I have is you probably should switch up your hotkeys for your spells. I did it a bunch of times, so I'm still not getting quite perfect with the switching. But if you play Allegro, you can play songs way faster like I was saying. So do that one first if you want to play a bunch of stuff quickly. Like look how quickly this flute song comes out. And that flute is damaging this guy's armor and reducing his attack power. Very useful song, and not just for PvP, it also works very well at PvE, making skeletons, even the centipede, a lot weaker. 
Like, I was very surprised with how much weaker they are. It seriously helps with clearing rooms, and it's also very good in a team fight. The other tip I have for you guys is do not sleep on throwing axes or throwing knives. You have access to both of them as the bard, and I suggest using them. You'll see a little bit of an example of this right here. But essentially, well, this one isn't a perfect example, but what it gives you is space and time. You hit someone with a throwing axe, it slows them down quite a bit, giving you a little bit more, a little bit more of a chance you're going to get that spell off. Right here we have our action speed going for us, and our falchion, which I highly recommend, is doing very, very well. I have no idea why I have a secondary weapon in that slot. Don't recommend that. But you run falchion by itself, and you'll be fine. This guy pushes us, we're throwing axe in the face, keeping him just out of our reach, and then turn on him perfectly. So, tried and true method, it works very, very well. And you can also do setups like that with the hand crossbow. As you see, I'm buffing my action speed right here, because I know I'm getting in a fight. All my other buffs are already set up, and we're going to be hitting quite quickly, even hitting the wall. 70 damage on a, I think it is a green, Alshin is pretty crazy. And the crossbow leads to a nice little starter to slow them down so you can get in swinging range. Works quite well. Once again, keeping my action speed up is so important on top of having those 120 second buffs rolling. You're not a very strong class, but you do swing fast and you can outmaneuver classes. This one's kind of an easy one, but basically hand crossbow slowed him down and Falchion cleaned him up. And here's a quick look at your movement speed when you play Accelerando and have the movement speed buff or shrine. Pretty crazy. You really move when uh, you have those movement speed buffs going. 412, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Pretty high. The fortunate part of all this is we get kind of stuck in the hand crossbow trap of trying to reload it. Even with your action speed, I don't find it reloads fast enough while you're moving. And that's when I start to prefer the survival bow, which I'll show you some examples of here shortly. Did not expect to see this team here. We hit him with a crossbow bolt, and then we reload, which we shouldn't have. We should have just got some distance, maybe played a song. Once we got tagged by that fouling axe, it was basically game over, not giving me any space to maneuver or get enough distance. Unfortunate, but it was a learning lesson, and I do think there's some serious potential in the survival bow. This next example is a little bit of a a little bit of a long, drawn-out fight. It's kind of how I expect to see these go when you're doing 1v3. You can't really be charging into a team, you need to be picking them off slowly and choosing the right times to attack. So we go some attack speed, or action speed, sorry, and then we go into movement speed. Also, plus three attributes. You're seeing how quickly these songs are coming out when you have your action speed rolling. And then we have the opportunity to finally start using Survival Bow, and this is one of my one of my first times using this thing, I did not realize it dropped so much. But you can pelt people with arrows if your bows are loaded. Keep them, you know, just a step behind you. It's all they're ever going to be is just a step behind you. Playing a cell rondo, keeping them at a distance once again. They're never going to catch me here unless I decide they're allowed to catch me, basically. It's a, it's a really kind of fun game, and it can be incredibly interesting. I can't wait to try this out more because I'm only just getting started testing this out. We get surrounded. We do land a good hit on this guy. Unfortunately, the second one doesn't land. And then that right there really made me mad. Crossbow, Skelly decides to target me, slowing down all my momentum and taking half my HP. I was ready for a really long drawn out fight against these guys. Now our chances are greatly reduced. Landing a few more survival bow shots, we maneuver around. Dodging a few swings. A rogue comes out of nowhere to try to kill the solo player, and uh, we're just getting a little unlucky here. I do seriously think with the survival bow and the right plays in that scenario there, we could have picked a couple of those guys off and made it out of there a lot. Guarantee we could have. That movement speed and action speed is no joke. On top of the fact that they can't get close to you if you're landing arrows, really, really interesting. If you have all your perks going and spells going, 120 second cooldowns, you can dish out some pretty crazy damage quickly and keep people away from you. It's really fun. I, um, I'm really enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. Here you'll see again, Celerondo, Allegro, action speed, movement speed, we're getting ready for a fight. All our other things are sitting in the background doing work for us as we kind of prep for this fight. And then we get this weird audio bug behind us which is super distracting. 
But here's our target. Like I said, I'm not very good at survival bow yet. Apologize. But it does the trick here to slow him down a little. Keep him from landing that first curse of pain. Hitting arms with falchion is not ideal. It really sucks the damage away from it. But eventually, our action speed makes that falchion hit so much quicker. Wins us that fight entirely. So, these are kind of just broad examples of how you guys can be successful. How you can kind of make it work for yourself. This is not a be-all, end-all guide. This is just some of the stuff I noticed as I've been kind of grinding out some solo bard gameplay. This is likely to change. Some of these combinations of music is definitely going to be thought about a lot more as players become more familiar with the class. And I even imagine people will leave comments in this video saying some stuff that I never even thought of. So, once again, thank you all. I hope this served you guys well and gives you a little bit more of a head start on getting into Bard. It's super fun. I love it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.